Hello everyone, welcome back to Compensating Wage Differentials Chapter 5 Part 3. In this part, we will talk about government regulation in the market for risky jobs and our jobs with uh, negative attributes. So in order to really understand what's going on, I highly recommend you go watch parts 1 and 2 before watching this part because it might not make any sense if you just start watching it this part. Alright, let's get started. So remember we talked about hedonic wages uh, where it shows the locus of points, the equilibrium points where different types of workers with different kinds of risk aversion matching with different kinds of companies with different levels of ability to reduce the risky aspect of the job. For instance, person A is more risk averse and company X can find it easy to reduce the level of risk so they match up and this point PA shows you the uh, level of wage risk combination another individual person B actually has more uh, tolerance to risk risk more risk lovers and company Y finds it hard to reduce the risk right it's a steeper when they intersect here right so then these this pair these uh, people you know this person person b and company y uh, match up at this point uh, pb and it implies higher wage and higher level of risk so work rate sensitive to risk work if b not that sensitive to risk firm x marginal cost of reducing risk is low firm y marginal cost of reducing risk is higher so person a works for company x person b works for company y Okay, so you have an A level of risk and B level of risk. So you have the two different level of equilibrium risk in the market for different kinds of people. What if government sets up a minimum safety standard in this market and says that it's illegal to offer a job that has more than N bar level of risk and N bar is actually here. N bar is right here. This risk level, maximum allowable risk level, basically says that up to this level, you can offer jobs with risk. And after that, all these jobs will be non-legal. Okay, therefore, NB, level of risk is prohibited. And then firm Y, where is firm Y, will go out of business, okay? Worker B will be forced to get a job at firm X. So worker B... B type will be worse off and move to a lower indifference curve. Let me show you how that would work. So this job doesn't exist anymore. I am worker B. I'm right here. So I need to basically be tangent to this isoprofit curve. So the only way as a B person to be tangent to that is to move to an indifference curve. UB prime lower indifference curve to be tangent to this isoprofit curve of the company so what happens is that yes you're right at the acceptable risk low highest risk level but your utility goes down okay so let me just clear it slide shows slide so boom person b's indifferent new indifference curve is here lower indifference curve pb prime is the new level of risk wage combination so worker b is worse off so here's an example, mid 1990s, one in 20,000 died in the job. So probability of death while working is 0.00005%. Okay, so how did we find this? One divided by 20,000. That's the probability. Okay, here are some facts. Male workers are risk lovers compared to women. Single deaths are more risk averse since they they are the only parent right if they die their kids are not going to be cared for so who sorts into safer jobs so compared to men you expect women to sort in the safer job single dads you expect them to sort in the safer jobs compared to dads with children okay so let's rank the following from risk averse to risk lover and you can stop the video once i give you the options and think about it on a piece of paper Single men with no kids, okay? Married men with kids, with a spouse. Married men without children, single dads. 
So which one will be the most risk aversive, very resistant to risk? Which will be more risk lover, the most risk lover? And who are the ones in the middle? Pause the video now and come back in a minute. So if we get started, theory says that single deaths are the most risk aversive. So who sorts into the safer jobs? So rank them from most risk averse to risk lower. Single deaths, the most risk aversive. Married men with kids, again, they're the second risk aversive. Married men without kids, again, they still have a family, right? They're going to be more risk averse compared to single men with no children, all right? So data, this is what theory says. Data says for men, Single dads are the most risk aversive. Then comes married men with kids and married men without kids. Interesting. So having kids in marriage doesn't change much. They're the same level of uh, risk awareness. And of course, single men with no kids are the least risk averse. For women, single moms are the most risk aversive group. Married with kids are second most risk aversive and more risk tolerant are married women without kids and the least ones the least uh, the least risk aversive group or risk risk lovers will be a single woman with no kids okay so men and women work in different occupations by occupational differences you can explain 75 percent of the risk taking behavior okay so you look at different occupations. Let me give you an example. I'm a professor, very low risk job. I have a friend who works at an oil refinery. She worked outside for years as a single woman and her occupation is much more risky. So she's considered to be a more risk lover type. Okay, so let's, let's actually draw this risk and negative aspect of the job. Single dad, okay, the most risk aversive. M married dad, less risk aversive. Single dads tend to be more sorting into being a teacher. Married fathers, maybe bus driver. Why bus driver? Because driving is inherently more dangerous. You drive all day. So maybe married dad sorts into a bus driver job, okay? So for women, so you have women, example, they're more risk aversive versus men. They are more risk lovers. Okay, so for us, a teacher, bus driver, these kind of different differences. So civilian labor force is 56% men, non-fatal injuries, 67 per disproportionately men. Even though a little bit more than half of our labor force is men, disproportionately more men get into non-fatal injuries, look at the fatal injury percentage, happens to men, 92%, very disproportionate, okay, so why, because they sort into different jobs, okay, so in next part, we're going to talk about labor market equilibrium and labor market compensating differential W star uh, optimal wage determination, we're also going to talk about market for risky jobs in an example or any job with negative attributes. I will see you in part four.